An update on the chickens. A little update on the toppies. You can see the chicks are pretty much like fully feathered. They're starting to, to roost now on their with their parents. <clears throat> Normally this is the age that I would take them from the from the mother when they get to be this age and they start roosting on their own. Without the mother having to sit on them. Uh, and then that way she can start laying and come up with another batch. Fortunately, I woke them all up now. I also wanted to show you this little um, <clears throat> sweater stag. I think he's exactly six weeks old now. And he's roosting all by himself. I think his mom is already sitting again. And I didn't even realize she had made another nest. But he is roosting all by himself. My guess is, is he's a little stag. He's quite dark. It's not very likely that he's a pullet with that dark of a breast. But he's all on his own. I could probably catch him too and put him in a separate cage. Because she is apparently all done with him. Let's go see if she has the nest. Yeah, he's all alone tonight. So she must be done with him. <laughs> she does have a few eggs, but she's not sleeping on them, so. Must be she's just done. Yeah. There she is there. So when I got up to do chores this morning, this <coughs> rooster here had somehow got out, as you see. And he is all beat up. This is probably a $1,500 rooster. <laughs> Pure Johnny Jumper Kelso. He's actually my main brood cock. But somehow he got out of his pen. And he's been off fighting everybody all morning and is just a wreck. This is one of the issues that make game chickens unattractive to a lot of people because they are so aggressive. Looks like he cut off his back toe somehow. Ah, oh, what a pain. Looks like he's hurt his wing. And sometimes when it gets real hot, they just get real ornery. Uh, I just thought I'd share that with you and as a tip to, you got to really make sure your birds can't get out because you, it's a lot of damage when they do so another thing I just about anybody that raises a lot of game chickens knows and this is something handy if you are just getting into raising game chickens you definitely want to have a uh, first aid kit for your chickens because this stuff happens from time to time and sometimes it's you know a lot of times it's due to circumstances beyond your control like I said I'm not sure how he even got out sometimes they'll dig a hole through your pen and get out or sometimes the wind will blow and blow a tree down and you know 
knock down the corner of your pen and then they get out and you can come early in the morning and they've already been fighting for a long time. So it can be discouraging. I don't have any, uh, I'd like to put some salve on it. This is some of my first aid stuff here. But uh, since he's already cut his toe off, I won't be able to wrap it. A lot of times you could put some Neurosporin or uh, uh, bag bombs, another good one. Put on their toe and wrap it and you can heal it back up. Which I would show you, but I believe he... Looks like he just cut that toe pretty much clean off. It's just a little stump there. So in this case, what I'm going to do is just um, uh, spray it with a disinfectant and something that will help dry it up so it's not gooey. Like that. So it will heal up. And he seems to still be walking, but he'll probably always have a little limp now after this. Well, he's a great rooster. He produces a lot of good chickens. And he's just, just beautiful. Here. Hopefully you'll be able to see me in here. So, as you see how I'm holding him, this is probably the best way uh, to hold a chicken. Like this. Uh, I'm not sure if he'll bite me or not. So this, is the, this, is the best, this is the best way to hold a chicken, a grand chicken, where you have full control. You see, I got my fingers between his legs, and if he starts flopping, I can put this one around like that and I'll calm him down. So we're going to treat his leg as uh, heel oil. I'm just going to use this. I really like this stuff uh, because it really dries up their wounds and, and he, you know, disinfects it and keep like flies and stuff from getting in there is bad. I'm just going to go ahead and coat that real good. dries that'll dry everything up and it it'll keep it coated and keep so like uh you know up to keep infection and stuff out of there he's just tired out and it is warm today already but anyways i just thought i'd share that with you a little first aid uh also rooster there and I'm gonna put him back in his pan and let him get a drink so hopefully he can recuperate he's, he's been out here wreaking havoc on the chicken yard gotta figure out where he got out at So I gave, just gave him some water and put him back in his pen. And I'm really fortunate that he didn't break his beak. A lot of times they break their beak and it doesn't always go back, depending on how bad they break. It does look like he chipped the tip off, off a little bit. But fortunately, he didn't break his beak off, although he just did a number. He no longer has any back toes. 
You broke the one spur off. I think where he got out was right there. Looks like the top of the pin came loose there at the corner and he pulled it out. That's where he got out. I'm definitely going to have to fix that right away. Well, this rooster here, his son, looks like when he first got out he fought him because he's kind of beat up too back there. Doesn't look like anything major that I can see. Looks like his knees are skinned up just a little. Let's go check on him. like he cut a back toe off too, or part of it. His prop toe. <sighs> I probably ought to catch him and spray his feet down as well. This rooster here was also involved in the skirmish. He must have came around here after. He got out. This rooster I found with his spur caught in the in the door. He was just hanging upside down. But other than that, he doesn't seem to be uh, have any uh, damage. But there is one rooster missing out of here. It must have gotten out. And I don't see him anywhere, so I don't know if they fought somewhere and he killed him off in the woods or if he beat him up and he ran and hid or what. But it was a pure Kelso stag, I hope I find him. Looks like he fought with this one here too, judging by his head. Hmm. I'll have to go look for that stag here in a minute. I found that Kelso stag. He's right here in the woods. And he's beat up. I think I'm going to try and get the net and catch him and then I will assess how much uh, damage was done. So, Kelso's, she's headed for round two. She hasn't started laying yet though, but I've been giving her mash. So hopefully she'll start laying real quick again. This is actually the son of the first rooster I just showed you over there. Um, none of these are actually sitting right now. They're all in between round one. This hand had the brown red she had. Uh, what she had, five chicks? She's done with those now. The red quill hens, unfortunately, uh, the chicks were getting out. As you see, I need to fix the fence here. And those little puppies that were running around, I think they ate them all because they just came up missing. So, hoping that this hen here will start sitting again soon. So I can have some red quills to sell next year. 
I do still have a couple of roosters that didn't sell. So, but I don't have any hands left. This this red quail hen in here is sitting already, I think. On the hatch, um, she's not sitting, but she is starting to lay. So she's got three eggs in there, four eggs in there. <clears throat> the first hatch hen, she's uh, she hatched five, but she lost two also to that little puppy, I believe. Fortunately, I was able to sell the puppy, so got rid of that problem. But it looks like two hens and a rooster. A little stag there in front and then the other two in the back are uh, there's a hen there and a little, little pullet there behind her. And these are uh, McLean's hatch. I just got her locked out so uh, the other chickens can't uh, mess with her. And she did pretty good. I mean, she lost two out of five. And that, like I said, that was due to that puppy because they were getting out uh, through a little hole under the fence. <clears throat> and the puppy must have got him. This would be the father of those chicks there. Oh, man, he's got a broken sickle. Looks like. So, and over here, the uh, toppies, these are, um, these are Flareyides, uh, Flareyide Pumpkin Halsey uh, toppies here, and uh, The males get kind of a mohawk, and the uh, hens got like a little bit of an afro going on. They're nice, bulky birds. This is their first batch. Um, this one I had to separate because they were fighting already. This really hot weather that we've got here uh, just really woke them up and they were fighting like cats and dogs. I believe that there's only one hen out of this whole batch. The rest of them are all roosters. It's only a matter of time before the other Three start fighting and I'll have to find more pins for him, but the separating him, you can see where he's still kind of beat up. Separating him for now has seemed to uh, fix the problem. But I just hate that. That's one thing that happens in the warm weather is those little stags, some of them times they're only six weeks old and they'll, they'll get real hot like this and they'll just start fighting like terrible. Red hen here. She's also on her second. She just hatched, uh, I want to say the day before yesterday. She just had two. This hen is really aggressive. Uh, the first time I opened the door after she hatched, she flew down 
right out of that nest up there and hit me in the side of the face and knocked my glasses off. But if you approach her real slow, she and don't get them babies worked up, she'll uh she's not too bad. But. This is a really a nice brown red hen. I can't wait to see what these babies turn out to be like. These are my Lloyd Minor Blues. See the blue and the, the blue highlights in the tail and the wing on the female there and the male. This, this kind of slate blue in the tail and the chest there. That's what I love about American game chickens. They just really got a nice stance, nice posture, and they're just beautiful birds. Anyways, they've got one chick, or what the one hen in here does. So what I do when I build these pens, just a tip if you're into game chickens, and this works well for me, is I build these pens so I can close them off. And uh, that way, you know, the one hen can raise their chicks in that side, and this hen could raise the chicks in there. And then I can leave the rooster out in the yard here in the summer. <clears throat> but I have to repair the roof, as you see, it fell in. Not sure what happened there, but another project to add to the list. This in here has got one chick. And she's she's not a real nice hand. She's kind of old and grumpy. What I want to do is put some more straw in here. and put some water for the chick. But this hen is so mean, I'm not sure she's going to let me very easily. I don't think I'll be able to hold the camera and do it. So, you guys hold on a second. So I did manage to get her out of the nest with the chick. She just had one. And I put a, I love these little feeders for them. Put some grain in there. So this partition is closed off behind her there. So she can just raise that chicken here until it's big enough. And uh, hopefully the other hand will... Uh, Lay again. Right, before I fix this roof here, there she is up under there. I will show you the spangled mugs. This hen also only had one chick. I'm not sure. What are you guys? Uh, that are into game chickens. How was your second hatch this year? For some reason, my second hatch, everybody's just had one chick survive. These are the blue spangled mugs from uh, AR Compound originally. 
the Richard Kelly, pure Richard Kelly bloodline. These here are um, Sid Taylor's. I think that puppy also got a couple of these too, because there was three, there was four of them. But uh, I got smart and caught these ahead of time and put them in that cage. The uh, hand is sitting again already, so she's. Headed for round two. And we got the sweaters. Um, she had one chick the first time, that little stag there. And she just hatched yesterday, I think. Ouch. She's got one chick again. I don't know what's up with this one chick the second time around. I guess it's better than no chicks, but I'm not sure if it's the weather because it is a little bit warmer than it normally is right now. We're like a month and a half ahead of our weather wise it shouldn't be quite this warm but they yeah that seems like all the uh second batch has just been one chick um the gray blacks on the other hand they did a little better So this hen here, I guess she's sitting on them, but she had three real nice chicks. She don't want to get up off of me. Right there's one in the back. Just ran back in him again. I'm not gonna mess with her too much, but she's got three. Looks like two hand two hands and a rooster. The rooster, the males are gray like that, and the females are dark like that. I think these are pretty chickens. Hopefully, she hatches well as well. And she's got a sister out here. And we got the regular grays over here.
And she did pretty good, but this is actually her first hatch this year. And she had five. And the father would be uh, this guy right here. These are regular grays. These are the uh, yellow pumpkin halsies. Same deal here, this hen has only got one chick. But I'm thinking it has something to do with the weather. The weather does affect, you know, more than you realize how well they hatch sometimes. and. Also, males and females, you know, sometimes you'll notice when it's real hot, they'll have more males, and when it's cooler, there'll be more females born. <laughs> 